All right. Good morning, everybody. Long time no see. I want to restart the channel and, um, you know, we'll start with a, I think, a pretty interesting Laravel series. Um, in this series, we'll try to talk about SaaS systems. So, you know, think about like notification systems and muting stuff and, you know, things like that. I have a list, but like, you know, I don't want to expose everything uh, right away. So, uh, you know, you'll just have to, to wait a bit to see what we'll be talking about in the next episodes. Um, this first one, it won't be like, you know, super interesting because we'll be uh, simply setting up the app, uh, the, the project uh, to feed our needs. And uh, I have a fresh Laravel install here. Uh, I just followed this getting started on macOS from the documentation. Uh, you know, it creates your app, it's uh, via Docker, it sets up everything that you need. Um, so now we can get started. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is clean up the project a bit we'll be working on an API. So, you know, we don't really need any of the JS or CSS stuff. I'm not sure if there is something in the public now. No, we have nothing here. Um, we can see our migrations. We do not need this table for our project now. So we have our users table. Um, what I don't like is I do not want my, um, my timestamps to be nullable. So that's the first thing that will change here. And I think there is use current. Yep. Uh, that works. Okay. Um, so let me just check our other tables. Yeah, let's remove the nullable from here and just use current and use current is already here. Um, we should use this here, uh, instead in the update.com. All right, and you know, it would be nice if we uh, don't have to do that, like if we just have to do this once. So what we can do, um, I think that's how it's called, maybe not. Um, it's YouTube Laravel.test one. Yeah, okay. Uh, so what we can actually do is uh, change the files that Laravel uses for migrations. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I always get it wrong, but this time it worked. Uh, so great. We may want to, you know, we, we can leave all of them here. That's completely fine. Uh, we want to update this migration create tab and we'll just copy these two bad boys and paste them here and we should be good. And uh, let me just increase font size a bit. Okay, I think this one should be better. Um, let me know if that works for you guys or uh, do we want to tweak that? Uh, but yeah, okay. Um, so with that out of the way, um, now I would want to install Octane. And for those, yeah, it's require. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Octane is Laravel's Swool adapter, which allows your app to be basically more performance. And we obviously want that. There is basically no drawbacks in using this. Uh, it can be tricky when you're doing like CI CD and you have um, a simulink deployment. Um, for, for those scenarios, you need to do some um, 
you need to sweat a bit to to make it work without you know bringing your server down. Um, but yeah, okay, we have it here. Uh, now what we want to do, and this won't be here out of the way, uh, out of the box. Um, we should just go to the Octane documentation. Octane. There is a way to. Yeah, we need to run this command. We need tool, and now we want to publish the. Uh, the configuration. We just need to do this from the. From the no, not from the Docker container, basically. Okay, now we should have our Docker Docker folder. We don't need seven four. We don't need eight zero. Now we can see our uh, our folder here. Um, so I will be lazy and just you know copy. Uh, the configuration here from my other projects. Uh, so let us go to our Docker file and let's just paste that in here. Uh, let me just confirm that my SQL is here. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. Um, now in the supervisor configuration. We want to replace that with um, an octane call. So instead of you know doing uh, artisan serve, we would do artisan octane start. And now I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we may also want to update our uh, Docker Compose. Uh, first of all, I prefer to you know just be PHP. I find it easier to uh, to work with, and it's you know easier to connect. Uh, we won't need any of those, so let's keep the MySQL. Let's keep Redis, and these bad boys can go to trash. Okay. Also, we don't need that. And now, if I didn't mess up anything, and I probably did, uh, we'll be able to rebuild our containers. Okay, so let's just run this and wait until, uh, you know, it does its magic. I think if we just... And we're being sale, build, no cash. Okay, let's do this. In the meantime, uh, we can go to our models directory. And here, I really don't like fillable, so let's just put garlic here. We can remove the dog blocks from these bad boys. Uh, we all know what they do. Um, then we know that we are not going to use uh, API tokens, so we can just remove that. And I prefer to keep my uh, trades in separate lines. We can also remove this thing here and this. And okay, that seems okay. All right. Um, I will add a style ci dot style ci yml. And I will just copy my configuration. All right, so um, this basically will run some formatting when we set up our CI and CD to make sure that our you know code is up to standards. Now we won't need this view, this welcome view. Uh, instead of this, uh, we can just create our uh, controller. So uh, let me just create a new PHP file. Let's just call it home controller for now. Uh, you know, we need like an entry point to our app. 
I'll just assume that this is what this will do. Uh, so we'll just return response JSON. Uh, yeah, that works. Good job, Copilot. Uh, let us import and set the return type here. And now all we need to do is go to our web PHP and just define our routes. So uh, we'll use the home controller here. And it seems that I cannot type for whatever reason. Uh, so now just let's just, let us just import this uh, class here. And now it seems that our sale has been recompiled. Uh, so let us see if it will actually run for us now with Octane. Um, that's not good. Um, I'll just uh, stop the containers in the uh, you know UI of the app of the Docker. The ones that we removed, uh, I could have done it in a better way. But you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, I always have Docker problems, so uh, you know. I wouldn't be myself if it didn't happen for me. Uh, but yeah, this should be pretty easy to fix, hopefully. And our restart should do the trick. Okay, we are back in the game. Um, so now if we go to our website and we refresh, <laughs> we'll get an error. Now the question is, uh, why is it happening? And that is a tricky one to answer. So I do have a theory. Um, there's probably some more configuration that we need to do. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, we need this here. Uh, so this is uh, an NPM package that will allow us to, uh, to watch the files. Uh, because we used this thing in our supervisor here. So we, you know, we defined the watch. And because of that, uh, we, we probably do need that file to be to, to serve our server because then it doesn't know when to start it, maybe. But then we wouldn't it start like right out of the box, but not read file changes. Yeah. I think that's, oh, never mind. That was our issue. Um, so yeah, now we get our response. Uh, and yeah, it took a while to load, but now it seems to be pretty fast. Uh, uh, so now I'm pretty sure that we should be um, we should be able to migrate our database. Oh, there is a new UI for that. That's cool. Uh, okay, let's roll it back. Uh, you can see that. Laravel created personal access tokens table, and this is the, the migration that we didn't want. Uh, this is, well, uh, yeah, we, we just need to disable that. Uh, so we can do this by using sanctum uh, ignore migrations. Yeah, and now when we run the migration again, it shouldn't create that table for us. And if we ever do need those personal access tokens, we can you know, always implement them. Um, okay, that's great. Um, now, you know, it would be cool to actually have a user. Uh, so we may go to our database seeder 
and uncommon this stuff here and just use a simple factory all right so now the last thing i like to do is uh, i like to store my code inside source instead of app so let us move everything from here to the source and uh you know we can talk about uh why and everything later on. Uh, this is basically like a setup to do some DDD. Uh, but yeah, um, we should, th this is, you know, just how I prefer to do this. You obviously do not have to, uh, you do not have to do this as well if you do not like this. I'm surprised that PHP Storm is smart enough to update this, this PSR here. Uh, but it's pretty dumb if like you want to move a file and it wouldn't change your namespace. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so I'm pretty sure that you know this covers the the very basic setup of a new Laravel app. Uh, this is you know just some things that I like to have on my projects. You know, nothing crazy, uh, but you know we, we got it running so. So that's cool. And, uh, you know, going forward in the next episodes, we'll see some, some pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. And by the way, now that I think about the DDD piece, I think it may be too much for a tutorial. Uh, but we'll see, you know, uh, I'm like, kind of trying to do this live because I've been procrastinating with recording anything for a long time. And, you know, now that I started, I, I just want to, to get rolling and to, you know, prevent myself from dropping the ball again. Uh, I, I will record a couple of episodes in advance before um, publishing this one. So if you are watching this, it means that you know, a couple of next episodes have already been recorded, so you should expect them shortly. Uh, all right, that's it from me, guys. Uh, hope you're having a great day and talk to you soon.